Good day, good day. I'm Des Asante from the Tech Muse podcast at uh, techmuse.ca. Um, in a previous episode, I had spoken a little bit about um, uh, the way in which I have set up my analog back end in the studio. It was in the video tour of my studio, and I gave some some fa fairly detailed explanation as to how I have my hardware analog uh, um, back end set up. Now, it was asked of me if I could uh, illustrate how I set that all up in Cubase. And so that's what I'm going to do today. So um, basically, the first I've just got an empty blank project on the screen here. And what I'm going to do uh, first is set up my I.O. I'm going to set up my ins and outs. Um, so I'm going to hit F4, which opens up my VST connections. And uh, if I do that the old fashioned way, I can go into the devices menu here and hit VST connections. You can see there the keyboard shortcut is F4. So this is where we set up, uh, this is where we tell Cubase what inputs and outputs, physical inputs and outputs, we want to be made available to our session. So on the inputs tab here, by default, I have a stereo in, uh, a pair of inputs uh, mapped to my first two inputs of my main interface, the uh, Steinberg MR816. Uh, I'm going to leave that for now. Um, I'm also going to go over to my outputs tab here. By default, there's another, there's just the stereo main outputs. Uh, now, in my particular situation, I'm using um, my MR816, which is 8 ins and 8 outs, and I'm also using a Behringer ADA8000, which is another 8 in and 8 outs over uh, optical, over ADAT. And in my particular setup, I actually have my main monitors um, plugged into the, uh, the first two outputs of the Behringer um, for various reasons. The there's, there's a, a, a weird little thing that happened with the, the new Behringers where they have a, a converter chip that falls asleep uh, if it doesn't receive any audio for a short period of time. And so I don't want that going through my analog back end going and, and then basically getting into my mix. And so I set it up this way. So I'm just going to quickly change that to ADAT1 and ADAT2. So those are my main stereo outputs in my particular situation. Yours may vary. Um, the next thing I want to set up is I want to set up the output stems for um, my passive summing mixer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another stereo bus. In fact, I'm going to add four of them. Hit OK there. Um, these are uh, mapped by default to uh, analogs one through eight, which are the first eight outputs of my Steinberg interface. And to be honest, that's exactly what I want because those eight outputs are hitting my uh, PM8 by SM Pro Audio, my passive summing mixer that I um, spoke about in the studio tour video. Um, so for my own purposes, I'm just going to double click and rename these. I'm going to call this stem one. I'm going to call this stem two. I'm going to call that, you kind of get the idea. Stem three and stem four. Look at that, it did that for me. Okay, so now I've got uh, my main stereo outs, which hit my speakers um, eventually after a little bit of hardware that I had uh, described in the video. And then my f four stereo stems, which of course represent eight physical outputs on my uh, interface. So those are set up. Now the other thing I want to do is go into my inputs tab. This is a main stereo input that I may use just for doing a quick overdub or just patching something in to, uh, to record. I'm going to add one more stereo bus. It's set to stereo configuration. I just want one of them and hit OK. And I'm going to call this uh, return. So this is the channel I'm going to use when I want to record the result of my mix passing through my hardware, basically just print my mix. OK, so I'll call that return so I don't get confused. And the last thing that I want to set up while I'm in here is I'm going to set up my external effects. So I'm going to add an external effect. It's going to be a stereo effect. And yeah, we'll just leave it called external effect. And I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to connect these. The send is going to be a pair of outputs on my Steinberg. And we're going to use outputs 7 and 8, which is what I have hitting my patch base so that I can quickly, you know, patch something in if I want to. And I use inputs 7 and 8 as my return. So basically what I've done here is I've set up, I've told Cubase that if I want to use, say, my Lexicon um, effects unit, my MPX100, in a mix, like on a particular track, maybe there's a nice reverb on it that I like, um, I can just simply patch my 7 and 8 outputs of my interface 
to the lexicon unit and have its outputs coming back to input seven and eight on my patch bay. And I can go ahead in Cubase and use an external, use my external effect that I've set up. And now I'll be able to run any track or any audio that I want through uh, my lexicon, for example, or anything else for that matter. So that's how I set up my VST connections. Just a quick review on inputs. My main stereo inputs that I'd use if I'm going to plug in a, uh, a mic and do a quick overdub or a keyboard or what have you. And then I've got my return channel, and that's going to accept everything that passes through my hardware, the back end. And then my outputs, I've got my main stereo outputs, which are uh, set up to hit my speakers. And I've got my four stereo stems. Uh, oh, one of them got disconnected. <laughs> that's right. Reason being is because I chose the wrong inputs for my effects loop. <laughs> so let's fix that now. So uh, over here to the effects, it's actually not analog 7 and 8. It's ADAT 7 and 8 that I have connected to my patch bay. There we go. So ADAT 7 and 8, and then it is coming back in analog 7 and 8. That's the, uh, the difference bit, by the way, is ADAT 7 and 8 are the port 7 and 8 on my Behringer ADA 8000. Analog 7 and 8 are uh, on my MR816. Um, so that's how I differentiate the two. Now we're set up. A quick review. Nothing is red. Everything has a connection. And we're good to go. So I can close out of that right there. Now, the other thing that I'll do is, I may as well do this now, so you can, uh, for the benefit of uh, the viewers here, is to set up my session template. So what I might do is I'll have, uh, let's see, I'm going to create an audio track for starters, a stereo audio track. And I'm going to label it. Uh, print and uh, that's going to be where I print my mix to so its input is going to be set to my return channel so that anything coming through my um, my analog back end is going to return to this channel I can arm it to record hit record and capture the results okay so that would be my print channel the other thing I like to set up is I like to set up some groups and let's do some groups so the first thing, and I'm going to set up just a few of the basic ones. So in a, in a typical situation, we'll have drums. So I'll create a group for all the drums. We'll have guitars. I'll create a group for guitars. We'll have keys. I'll create a group for keys. We'll have vocals. I'll create a group for vocals. And in the vocals group, I like to do this by default, is have um, uh, main vocals and backup vocals. So we'll start with those. So we'll add those group tracks, and I'll give them a quick label. So we'll call this, um, let's see, all vocals. All right, and we'll call this lead vokes. And we'll call this back vokes. And we'll call this all drums. And you kind of get the idea. All guitars. Oops, you get a little bit of a spelling mistake there. A couple extra letters for free. And we'll do all keys and then maybe i'll add one more and it's one more that i like to just call miscellaneous or just misc so for anything that doesn't fall into these categories we can send them there uh, little sound effect thingies and anything that you know you you may encounter in a track and then, so now I've got groups that when I import my audio, I can just automatically very quickly route, you know, all the guitars to the all guitars group, and then I have them all on one fader, uh, and so forth. The one thing I do like to do here is I'm going to take my lead vocals, and I'm going to shift select my backing vocals, and I'm going to change those to their outputs to all vocals. So now those two, I can put all my backing vocals to here, but they're ultimately going to hit my all vocals group. Same applies to my lead vocals. So if I were to solo all vocals, you see it solos lead and backing vocals as well. But I have access to those independently if I want them. Okay, so there's a bunch of group tracks. And then the other thing I like to do is set up some effects channels. So I'm going to set up effects channel. And as I mentioned in one of the episodes, I can't recall exactly which one it was, but I like to set up some kind of room type reverb, some kind of longer kind of plate kind of reverb, and some type of delay. So I'm going to set up for the starters, I like to use, uh, let's see, um, my powered plugins here. 
The EMT uh, Plate 140 from Universal Audio is an absolutely fantastic reverb. Um, I, I love it. This is what it looks like here. So I'm just going to set it up. I'm going to set it up to 100% wet because this is a send effect. So I can change the send level, you know, independently for each track that I send to it. So I'm going to leave that set up. 